For the first time ever, NASA has literally peeked into the sun and captured some amazing pictures that are totally mind-blowing. While studying these images, they noticed three unusual things on the sun's surface that raised concerns. First, they observed what seemed like rain on the sun. Hot plasma was melting and pouring down from the sky. Next, they found strange grass-like structures that were even larger than Mount Everest. Lastly, there were cracks on the surface giving rise to large bubbles, bigger than the area of California. This raises questions about whether these phenomena are normal. If they are, scientists need to understand why. The images were captured by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory from a great distance, which makes the process seem impossible. How did NASA achieve this, and does it challenge our current understanding of the sun? One of the major goals for the Parker Solar Probe mission is to fly through the sun's outer atmosphere, called the solar corona. This is happening right now. But what does it mean to touch the sun? To understand that, let's look at how the sun is built. Unlike Earth, the sun doesn't have a solid surface. It's a huge ball of super-hot stuff called plasma, held together by its own gravity. Some of this hot material flows out from the sun's surface. But close to the sun, it's trapped by the sun's gravity and magnetic field. This trapped material forms the sun's outer layer, called the corona. Interestingly, the corona is about 300 times hotter than the part of the sun we can see, called the photosphere. NASA has carefully examined the latest images of the sun, analyzing each layer to connect the dots between them. Here's what they discovered. Scientists were aware of certain phenomena in the space around the sun that could potentially pose significant threats to Earth in the future. This awareness stemmed from the understanding that solar flares caused by these phenomena could have severe consequences. In 2022, not only did one of Elon Musk's Starlink satellites, but a total of 49, fell victim to these solar flares, plummeting back to Earth. This event highlighted the sun's impact on Earth's atmosphere. In August 2023, a powerful solar flare disrupted radio and navigation signals across North America and prompted space weather forecasters to issue warnings because of energetic particles hitting Earth. In fact, since 1580 up to now, the sun has unleashed solar flares onto Earth a total of 33 times, resulting in significant losses for both the planet and its technology. To prevent such occurrences in the future, NASA has made the decision to approach the sun closely for study. By doing so, they aim to closely examine the activities taking place there and accurately predict solar events. This led to the launch of the Solar Dynamics Observatory mission in 2010, orbiting the Sun. The primary objective of this mission was to analyze various electromagnetic wavelengths emitted by the Sun. Similar to Earth's atmospheric layers, the Sun also consists of multiple layers. The outermost layer is called the corona, followed by the chromosphere, and then the innermost layer, the photosphere. These layers exhibit significant differences in temperature, leading to the emission of various wavelengths of light. To effectively study the sun, NASA utilized observations across multiple wavelengths. Their initial focus in this study was on the outer layer of the sun, particularly the corona. Now, based on its temperature, scientists began capturing images of the sun using ultraviolet light. What they observed at this wavelength was quite astonishing. They witnessed what appeared to be hot, boiling lava raining down onto the sun's surface. But why was this happening? Through thorough investigation, scientists realized that this was just a small part of a larger process occurring in the sun's corona. Essentially, the plasma, or the mix of charged particles, present on the sun interacts with its intense magnetic field. When this happens, the magnetic field ejects the plasma outward. This is because when charged particles move within a magnetic field, the field exerts a force on them, pushing them away. The same phenomenon occurs with the plasma on the sun, leading to the formation of solar flares, which are bursts of energy so intense that they can travel from the sun to Earth and back in just a few hours. However, similar to the water cycle on Earth, these hot flares gradually cool down as they reach the outer layer of the corona. Eventually, they descend back onto the sun's surface in the form of lava rain. Scientists have dubbed this phenomenon coronal rain, which they have observed and captured in the sun's corona. Now, armed with an understanding of the secrets of the corona, scientists ventured closer to the sun to study its middle layer, known as the chromosphere. Given that the temperature of this layer is lower than that of the corona, they utilized UV light of a specific wavelength to observe and capture images. What they discovered was rather surprising. Contrary to previous beliefs, the chromosphere of the sun isn't as smooth as once thought. Instead, they observed peculiar formations resembling Mount Everest sprouting up every five minutes towering like blades of grass. 
These structures, traveling at a speed 60 times faster than the outer layers of the sun, were propelled with the velocity of sound. This phenomenon occurs due to the sun's equator completing rotations faster than its poles, resulting in a twisting and entanglement of its magnetic field akin to a stretched rubber band. This entanglement forms small loops on the sun's surface. When these loops become untangled or tangled again, shockwaves reverberate through the chromosphere, giving rise to sharp, grass-like structures. In simpler terms, it's like when you pour water on a speaker and play music, causing the water to bounce up like sharp spikes. This is similar to what's happening in the sun's chromosphere, where grass-like structures form. After deciphering the secrets of these structures, scientists turned their attention to the next layer, the photosphere. To observe this layer, they adjusted the wavelength of light once again. The photosphere, with its scorching temperature of 5,000 degrees Celsius, is best observed in the brightest visible wavelength. When they captured images of the sun's surface at this wavelength, they noticed numerous cracks. But what did these cracks signify? Why were they appearing on the sun's surface, and how large were they? Initially, the images appeared unclear, leading scientists to believe that the cracks were merely pixels. However, upon zooming in, they realized that these pixels were actually the sun's surface features, constantly undergoing damage. They coined them solar granules. What's most intriguing about these solar granules is their size. Despite appearing small, they are as large as the biggest states in the U.S., such as Texas. They form through a process similar to the formation of supercontinents like Pangaea on Earth. Just like temperature differences beneath Earth's surface cause hot lava to rise near the core while cooled lava sinks, hot plasma near the sun's core also rises, while cooled plasma descends, contributing to the formation of these solar granules. In this process, when observed from above, the rising lava appears as bubbles, with the space between adjacent bubbles resembling cracks. This detailed view represents the zoomed-in image of the photosphere. Interestingly, when initially observed in the zoomed-out image, dark spots were clearly visible, distinct from solar granules. So, what exactly are these dark spots? NASA explains that they are formed by the sun's magnetic field, similar to how the magnetic field shapes structures like grass in the chromosphere. As mentioned earlier, the sun's magnetic field is twisted, creating small loops on its surface. These loops generate shock waves on a larger scale, while on a microscopic level, the charged particles within the plasma align in a common pattern due to the strong magnetic field. This alignment reduces the vibration of the charged particles, leading to cooling of the plasma and the formation of black spots, representing the image of the plasma. This phenomenon is known as gravitational pull of the plasma. Interestingly, the deepest image of the sun, taken from Earth, reveals its smooth surface during sunrise or sunset, which corresponds to the photosphere. Overall, by studying the sun's layers, we gain insight into the complex processes occurring within it. Space agencies like NASA and ISRO closely monitor these phenomena. While no exceptionally strange occurrences are detected, there remain unanswered questions warranting further exploration. For instance, why have all space agencies, including ISRO, launched 10 solar missions in the last 20 years if everything is supposedly normal with the sun? It's not as if we're searching for water on a distant planet or planning to establish a colony. So, what drives the need for repeated research missions? Do scientists possess specific insights, or is there a hidden interest behind this fervor that eludes common understanding? Initially, I shared similar doubts. As mentioned earlier, there's been a recent uptick in solar flares from the sun. However, delving deeper into this inquiry revealed that NASA had dispatched satellites prior to SDO to study these phenomena. For instance, the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, SOHO, launched in 1995, and the Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory, STEREO, in 2006. SOHO recorded vibrations at the sun's surface and captured its sound, while STEREO had its limitations, including slow data transmission speeds and subpar picture quality. This is where the Solar Dynamics Observatory, SDO, steps in. While it takes 12 minutes for SOHO to transmit an image to Earth and 1.5 minutes for stereo, SDO achieves this in just 0.75 seconds, with picture quality 10 times superior to its predecessors. NASA anticipates that SDO will deliver 50 times more images of superior quality compared to previous missions. Thus, to comprehensively understand the Sun, data from all these missions is crucial, warranting the deployment of additional satellites. In fact, ISARO has recently launched its own solar satellite, Adifier L1, aimed at providing superior insights compared to NASA's Parker Solar Probe, despite being stationed at the same point between the Sun and Earth. 
Achieving this feat required advanced technologies. How exactly does an object remain suspended in space, poised between the sun and earth without falling or deviating from its position? What technological marvels enable ISARO to accomplish such missions? We'll delve into the intricate science and technology behind these endeavors in a forthcoming detailed video, shedding light on the discoveries facilitated by these missions. That concludes today's video. If you found it informative, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and keep growing.